If you would have met me like five years ago, you would have never been able to guess that I would end up being a programmer. I literally only used my computer to browse the web, and if you would have asked me what I thought programming was, I would have had zero clue. I would have thought that writing code was writing ones and zeros, and now the main thing that I do is program. So how did this shift happen from the guy who didn't know the first thing about programming and had no interest whatsoever in computers to this? Literally having a YouTube channel dedicated to programming. The way that it happened for me was that I came up with this idea for an app I wanted to build. And I think today that pretty much everyone has an app idea, right? So that's what I had too. And I came up with this idea for an exercise related app. And I knew that it would be like way too expensive to hire someone to do it for me. So really the only option that I had was to build it myself. And ever since I started going to the gym and started realizing that by doing that regularly, I could slowly start gaining muscle and change the way I look. That experience really cemented the idea that you can actually do pretty much anything that you want if you're just willing to put in the time. It doesn't matter if you suck at maths right now, you can get better and it's the same as putting on muscle in the gym. You may start out being skinny, but if you persist and keep going there and doing the reps and sets, you will slowly start gaining muscle. And it doesn't matter where you start because everyone's starting circumstances are different. Some have done sports their entire life, so they already have a base level of strength or muscle. Others have had parents who are university maths teachers who've been helping them understand maths the right way ever since they barely knew how to walk. So I had this mindset, but this was the first time that I truly put that to the test. I wanted to build an app, so I thought to myself, how hard could it be? Which sounds a lot more cocky than I actually was. Uh, like I said, I knew nothing about programming or what coding actually meant. The way I thought about it was simply by the principle that I described previously. Others have learned to code, so I have to assume that it can be done. And I also have to assume that I can learn it just like anyone else can learn it. It's probably possible. I think this is an important point to learn and to be aware of. And it's related to the so-called growth mindset that you're not stuck in a place, but you can actually change where you are. If you're bad at maths right now, then that doesn't mean that you're just one of those people who cannot understand maths. But instead, it means that most likely you've just had less hours put into it than someone who is your age and is a math whiz. Same as when it comes to sports, you wouldn't expect that you would be able to complete a gold medalist synchronized diving routine without practice, right? Sure, you may have practiced diving since you were a kid and done it every now and then, but compared to an Olympic medalist, you would never say that the difference between you two is just that you're one of those people who cannot dive you would say that, well, of course I can't dive like them. They've been practicing their entire life. And yet when it comes to school things and especially science related subjects like maths and physics, the same logic just isn't applied. And arguments like I'm just not good at maths are used far too often. And it is hard to see the bigger picture here, but in reality, not being good at maths is most likely gonna be for the exact same reason that you wouldn't be able to beat an Olympic level synchronized diver, because you haven't had as much time practicing as them, or you haven't had the right coaching. Oh, and also this video is sponsored by Blinkist. Blinkist is an app that takes the best tips and tricks and insights from thousands of different non-fiction books and condenses it down into 15 minutes that you can either read or listen to. Most of the books that we read, we read in order to find the few key tools and takeaways that are in there that can help us. So with Blinkist you get incredibly high information density. I've come to use Blinkist daily. Anytime I'm commuting, when I'm at the gym, when I'm making food, I'll be listening to a book on Blinkist. I've used Blinkist in different ways. I've listened to books that I've read in the past in order to get reminded of the lessons that are in there. And a recent one is The Lean Startup. I also use it for books where I need the information fast. If I'm working on a project and I find a book that can help, I use Blinkist to quickly get the lessons from that book. And it's become a great tool for me, so I really cannot recommend this enough. 
The first 100 people that click the link in the description will get one week of unlimited access completely free and you can of course cancel at any time. You will also get 25% off a full membership. So again, definitely sign up for this. There's a link in the description. At the time when I started to build the app, I didn't even know that programming was being taught to absolute beginners at the university every single year. I pretty much thought that you had to have been like five years old when you started and you'd have to be an absolute math genius in order to be able to understand any of it. Uh, but I did start with it anyway, and I very quickly realized that my slightly cocky how hard could it be statement uh, was a little bit premature. And I remember just downloading Xcode and feeling like I didn't want to press any of the buttons because I didn't want to accidentally screw something up and then not know what I'd pressed and how to fix it. But my mindset was still that I pretty much believed that I could learn anything. If I just put in the time, I could probably learn it, which may sound a little bit arrogant, but it's not. I'm not saying that I can learn anything faster than anyone else. It may take me way longer than Joe to learn programming. And there may also be a chance that his genes are better predisposed to learn programming than mine. But that is just one of an infinite amount of reasons why he would learn faster than me. So if you default to blaming what you cannot change, which is your genes, then you also cement in your mind that you could never learn this. So you're better off blaming everything else than the things that you cannot change. Because by putting blame outside of yourself, you also gain control. Joe learned faster because his parents are both programmers, so throughout his life they've been talking about that around the dinner table. So even if he didn't know it to start with, he had heard several of the terms before and was familiar with the vernacular, which is why he learned faster than you. Blame your parents. Okay, I think I need to clarify what I mean when I talk about blame. I don't mean that you should go to your parents and start yelling at them for not being able to code. And I also don't mean that you should hold a grudge against your parents for not being able to code. It's not your parents' fault that you learned to code a little bit slower than Joe. But because of the unavoidable inequality of the world, Joe's circumstances were just better laid out for him to learn to code a little bit faster, whereas yours were not as favorable. But realizing this gives you a lot of power, because if your circumstances are to blame for why you learn programming slower and not your genetics, then that means that you're not lost. You can still learn, but you just need to put in the same quality time that Joe's already had. You can think of it like a cup of water. Joe's cup was already half full when he started because of his circumstances, and yours was almost empty. Both cups are the same height, so you both need the same total amount of water to fill them up. Joe has just had a head start, which is unfair, but it's life. And to be honest, Joe's probably done the same work that you need to do, but over a different time period. So anyway, slowly by watching tutorials, I started to be able to actually create something, but I didn't really understand how any of it worked. I literally just copied code and pasted it in and had it work that way, which wasn't great because as soon as I ran into an error, I would literally spend like an entire week just trying to solve that single error, which was super slow and agonizing. But for some reason, I did really enjoy it. And I spent like eight hours a day or more doing this. And that's kind of when I realized that this may actually be something that I should look into uh, because this could be something that I want to work with. To give you an idea of how lost I actually was, this idea of working with this came to me while I didn't know what any of the code that I wrote actually meant. I knew that an int was some form of number and that a string was text and that's it. And I was also so lost in general that I didn't know that the IT industry was a well-paying industry. I had no clue. I did know that you could make a lot of money by creating something like Instagram, but I had no idea that being an employed programmer was a high-paying job. So that is how completely lost I was in this world. My personality is very well suited for programming because to me, programming kind of gives me the same enjoyment and feeling as playing with Legos did for me as a kid. And I think that that's one of the main things that you should consider before becoming a programmer. 
and that is are you the type of person that can completely zone out and just get immersed in trying to build something on the computer is that something that sounds enjoyable to you because i think that that's the one thing if there is any one thing uh, that you need in order to become a programmer and it doesn't really matter when you start so that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And before you go, I just want to mention that I've created something called Clean Code Friday, which is a short email that I send out once every week, so every Friday, that contains a few of the things that I've found throughout the week that I think are interesting and that I think you might enjoy. So that would be things like books I'm reading, podcasts I've listened to, articles I've read, coding tips and tricks, productivity tips, and like I said, just anything that I think you might enjoy. So if that sounds interesting to you, then you can sign up by going to caltech.com slash clean code, or you can go to the link in the description. Uh, there will be no spam. I won't send out any more than once a week. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I'll see you in the next one.